The funding for this program is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the Friends of 4, 10, and 12. It's time again to curse those awful potholes. Every city in Idaho is suffering through another season of complaints about the nasty shape of the streets. Tonight, why are they so bad and what's being done? Good evening. It sometimes seems like potholes are like the weather. Everyone complains, no one does anything. Local government officials in Idaho would argue that they are doing something, but they just aren't able to keep up with all that needs to be done. Tonight, just what is being done and what some local officials would like to do to enhance their ability to deal with Idaho's deteriorating roads and streets. We begin with producer Paula Whistle. When you're unable to properly seal your streets, and if there are any cracks, that water gets in there, freezes, and and you have a pothole in your streets, and that, that's what we're experiencing this year. You can't go down any of the streets without finding some pretty healthy potholes. They're, uh, I don't know, they, they need to be fixed because the wear and tear on the vehicles is going to cost people a lot of money. Can't avoid them. Some roads are so bad there's no place to drive without hitting some potholes. What do you think of the condition of the city streets? Well, I think they're bad. They're full of uh, holes, chuck holes. And uh, I think they need re, uh, repairing because it's hard on the car, you know, to bump into one of them big deep holes and all that. You should see the rims on my bike. They're like, every once in a while it goes like this, you know, from the chuck holes. I mean, my frame is now bent from a chuck hole. Just six months ago, this dirt road on the outskirts of Pocatello was paved. But the severity of last winter caused the asphalt to crumble, and the city is now faced with not only the question of what to do with this road, but what to do with the abundance of potholes that also appeared as a result of the harsh winter. The problem is not a new one, and it is mirrored across the state. The roads need to be repaired, and the cities and counties don't have the money to do it. Well, it's not a uh, new tune that we're singing at all in that regard. With the uh implementation of what came out of the 1% initiative uh, funding was frozen at a certain level and we are we have been unable to uh, raise the money necessary except through a bond election to be approved by two-thirds of the citizenry and the one attempt to do that failed. Faced with fewer and fewer dollars from traditional sources such as property taxes, local governments have been forced to find new and different ways to fund street repairs. In Pocatello, city officials, after reading about the idea in a trade magazine, decided to work on drafting an ordinance that would declare streets utilities. Under the ordinance, residents would be charged for streets the way they are now billed for water and garbage service. You could go from sidewalk to sidewalk, and everything from the edge of the sidewalk to the edge of the other sidewalk would be included as a utility similar to the water or sewer system. And then uh, you would charge a utility fee on the monthly utility bill that the users pay. So you would fund, rather than through the property tax, or in addition to what we're doing with the property tax, there would be an additional utility fee charged for maintenance of streets. Possibly one of the more unique ways of dealing with the pothole problem has surfaced here in eastern Idaho in the town of Blackfoot. The city council here has established an adopt a pothole program. After choosing and paying for the repair of the pothole of their choice, residents here can receive pothole adoption papers. We send it to each person that has adopted a pothole and uh, it's been a fun project, and everybody's got a real nice charge out of it and a kick. And of course, we got potholes for for mama and papa and baby potholes. So <laughs> you can buy one from five to twenty-five dollars. When this program first started, it was around the first of March, and my wife's birthday was coming up the twenty-sixth of March. And so, not knowing what to get her, I I adopted a pothole for her. Well, I would imagine we're under a thousand dollars someplace in that neighborhood. Does that really uh, help that much? Oh yes, you bet, every bit helps. And the thing of it is, um, when you f if they adopt a pothole, and when they're in that area, why well, we fill some more potholes? So that's helping us go through the streets wherever they're real bad. We've had uh, letters and checks from people from 
Washington, D.C., from Missouri, Montana. One guy from uh, Santa Ana, California, he said that maybe we can start an adopt-a-pothole craze as they did the, the cabbage patch craze. <laughs> City officials around the state agree that just patching the potholes won't solve the long-term problem. In Boise, where the Ada County Highway District maintains the streets, the money is available to fill this year's potholes. Time is more of a factor. The repair was slowed down by the weather. But the district is concerned about the long-range funding of road repair. The Highway District is planning $75 million worth of new road projects, but has only $28 million to work with. The Highway Commission tried to get approval from the legislature this past session to establish a special improvement district to fund road projects. The bill was not approved it was held in committee. The proposal basically would require a special improvement district to be established by the property owners then once it was established and the, and the determination was made as to exactly what was going to be constructed there it would take two-thirds of the property owners or the excuse me of the voters in that area to pass that uh, act basically which would allow then the uh, bonded indebtedness to be placed against the property. I think in absolute wisdom, the legislature has turned it down for very good reasons. Also, um, the one percent, it's, to me, it's just another run around the one percent. Representative Rachel Gilbert, who is also a Boise realtor, strongly opposed the special improvement district legislation. The Ada County Highway District wants the property owner to pay for it. Now, when we have about 20% uh, of our land in Ada County, which is subject to the property tax because the rest of it's exempt. And so it's the little property owner who's going to pay for these new bridges and these new streets and all these things, the property owner. But what about the people that don't own any property? They're not going to be paying their full share. No matter what you do, there's always going to be people here from outside the area, be it you know tourists or citizens from the other part of the state. Uh, we think that, you know, really in fairness to everyone, that if we can spread it out over the county or over a larger area, that we can reduce the cost of the individual owner and make it an equitable situation. Some veteran pothole watchers are saying that Idaho roads and streets are as in bad a condition this year as they have been for a long, long time. Producer Cal Humphreys looks now at the situation in Lewiston. I have lived in Lewiston for 25 years, and, and I would safely say that I think the streets are in worse shape right now than at any time since I've lived here. But, you know, I, I will have to say in fairness to the city, you know, like the county and, and every other local entity in the state of Idaho, the budgets have been frozen because of the 1%, and street repair is a very costly item. Well, the condition of Lewiston streets are... Uh are about average. We have some that are good, uh, we have some that are quite poor, and that's accumulation of uh, circumstances over the years. There are some streets that have had a life of more than 40 years, and that is well beyond the normal life of a street. We normally uh, can build a street for maybe 20 years, and when you start extending them beyond that, why the deterioration or repair costs uh, can rise considerably, plus the fact that some streets in Lewiston were not built with good foundations and good drainage, and as a consequence, the cheap construction of the past is catching up with us today in terms of repair. It's roads like this which concern many citizens here in Lewiston. What about adopting an ordinance which would declare streets a utility, therefore allowing the cities to charge an extra amount on the utility bill, specifically for road repair? Would that kind of plan go over well here in Lewiston? I would suspect that considering the mood of the people right now as far as additional taxes, uh, that that would not be an acceptable method because, you know, I, I would be quite confident that they're not proposing a reduction in taxes elsewhere and to tack on another one when taxes, especially property taxes, are so high and people are going to scream and yell to high heaven, I would say. Do you have any suggestions on solutions to the problem here in Lewiston? The one solution that I see in our county, and of course it wouldn't be workable anywhere else, but uh, we have, you know, approximately 35,000 population, um, all but 4,000 live within the city limits of Lewiston. And I really feel that, um, you know, looking to some sort of a consolidation between the streets, um, city street department and the county road department would be the answer. 
I think it would only ultimately result in a saving to the taxpayer. I think that the voters, uh, if there were a sale, a, well, not, maybe a sales tax, but I was really trying to say a gasoline tax that could be capitalized, made into a bond issue to raise some major amounts of money and then paid off through gasoline taxes over the next 10 to 20 years, that that might be a more satisfactory uh, financing scheme. It's going to be a while before the city of Lewiston can get a good grasp on the economic situation in relationship to the repair of roads in this area. However, one thing is known for sure, repairs are badly needed. Now, with that little bit of background, we turn to three local officials who have a good deal to say about how good the roads are in Lewiston, in Pocatello, and in Boise. First with us tonight is Chuck Moss, the city manager of Pocatello, who joins us tonight in Pocatello. Uh, we heard uh, the Nez Perce County Commissioner say, Mr. Moss, that uh, the roads are as bad in Lewiston as uh, she's seen them in 20 years. Are people saying that in Pocatello, too? I think so, and I think that's a fair representation of, of about the situation we have. Uh, I was interested in Mr. McMicken's observations that roads are really designed to last about 20 years. In fact, that was the life of the interstate system, and that interstate was to be built, I guess, as much as close to the state of the art as possible. And we're all living with streets, some built beyond 40 years, and much of it built uh, without a great deal of base, without any drainage, and streets are expected to do so much. Uh, they we have a war on them about all the time because a lot of utilities are under streets, water, sewer, those sorts of things that have to have attention. So streets really take a whip and, and as a result, I think the length of the time they've been there, the lack of maintenance over the last several years, uh, we've, we're just reaping the benefits of all that gross neglect. And the public is complaining about it. Oh yeah, and, and the public is like everyone, like all of us, frankly, once they build it and put the money in it, they expect it to last forever, and, and, and streets are not going to do that or any other public facility or even your home or mine. Now, uh, the legislature, just within the last couple of months, approved a sales tax increase, was setting aside some money for local governments, presumably to do uh, things like fix the streets. Is that going to help you any? It, it will in, in the sense that uh, the demands that Streets have had to pick up some of the demand, at least in our case, for other basic services. We've had to shift some property tax money from street support to basic services like police and fire because of the tax lids. And also the legislature's helped us, uh, not this session, but last session in additional gas tax money. And we use all of that money for streets, but it just simply doesn't stretch far enough. The problem with what we got out of the legislature in sales tax this last session, and goodness knows it was appreciated, it really saved us from further disruption of public services. We were faced with additional layoffs of employees, cuts in basic services and police and fire without the assistance from the sales tax the legislature gave us. So from that standpoint, I'm not sure how much anyone can spring loose to do any major street maintenance with. Finally, then, uh, so several people in the videotape mentioned this problem, what, dates back to 1978, 79, when the 1% initiative came into being, or does it go back even farther than that? Well, at least in Pocatello, it goes back to the advent of the 1% initiative. We had a fairly extensive street maintenance program that we used uh, pretty much, we could get around on most of all our streets every eight or ten years. Uh, the loss of the property tax support for streets coupled with a radical increase in the cost of asphalt and materials that go into fixing streets really did us in. We're only doing really about a third of what we should do on existing streets. The other thing that occurred, of course, in Pocatello, we picked up another 41 miles of streets because of growth in the mid-70s and subdivisions that went in and so forth. And those streets are now needing our attention and, and that's further compounded the problem. We'll come back, Mr. Moss. Thank you. Let's turn now to the view from Lewiston. Leonard Williams is the mayor pro tem of Lewiston. He joins us tonight in Moscow. You heard Mr. Moss say that uh, people are complaining things need to be done. Same story in your city, sir? Absolutely, Mark. We have uh, around 200 miles of street in addition to all of the alleys in the older part of the town, and I'd say that probably 30 miles of the streets are good and drivable. 
Uh, the rest of them are really going to pot fast. When we annexed uh, South Lewiston in about 1970, we had uh, streets there, and this is where we picked up a lot of the problems, streets who were never really uh, maintained with good, a good two-inch layer of hot mix, and they're really going to pot now. We have about three uh, miles of street up there that is drivable and usable. The rest of it is in pretty bad shape. Will any of this uh, sales tax money that the legislature uh, <coughs> set aside for cities and counties, will it help with these problems? It will help in it. I think uh, Lewiston is expected to get about 370000 There's one hooker to it right now. We have a private police retirement fund, and our people who examine the books every other year say that we have to put in 238000 this year into the retirement fund. Now, we can't go above and beyond the 5% initiative or the 1%. So 238,000 of that is already utilized. That leaves us with about 150,000. That will do probably a mile and a half of street in good shape. One of the problems that we have up there is that 12 years ago, you could do a 40 foot wide street in Lewiston with a hot with a two-inch hot mix overlay for $23,000. Now it's up around $90,000. Here's the problem, and the 1% initiative has created a real bucket of worms. Okay, uh, let me just ask you, uh, are you, uh, do you get telephone calls from folks who are irate about uh, <clears throat> bent wheels and uh, having to have the car lined up, and is it, is it that bad? Yes, we have had several people turn in claims against our insurance uh, company four problems that they have experienced when they hit bad potholes. Right now, uh, the spring, the way it's been in Lewiston, is so wet and damp, the people have not really been able to get out and really get with a lot of the uh, bad ones. They're trying to patch them, and then the rains come along. And if you don't cut a patch hole, uh, pothole out the way Pocatello is doing and, and Blackfoot and a couple of those pictures, and really patch them in, the stuff comes right back out. Right. Well, we'll come back, sir. Thank you very much. Right. And with us tonight in Boise is Chuck Winder. He's the chairman of the Ada County Highway Commission, the governmental body that maintains all the roads in Ada County, including the streets within the city of Boise. Same situation here as uh, these two gentlemen have outlined in their cities? Yes, it's a similar situation here. I think that the uh, accumulation of two years of bad winters uh, have really hurt the streets. We fortunately, I think, at least in our budgeting, provided enough funding this year for pothole maintenance. Uh, it takes away from other aspects of the budgeting. Uh, you don't have enough money to go around as far as the total budget's concerned, so it does take away from major funding for major road improvements, overlays, and that type of thing. And you won't get any of that money that the legislature set aside for local governments, am I as, right? As I understand the uh, sales tax increase that was provided for, uh, we will not receive any of that because we are not a municipality or a county. We are a county uh, quasi-governmental entity as a highway district, and I think we're the only countywide highway district in the state under that definition. Well, let me uh, begin with you, Mr. Winder, and ask you what the answer is to this. Your answer, uh, at least suggested through the legislature, was a special improvement district. Is it still something like that? Well, I think our uh, proposal related to major improvements, uh, more so than just ongoing maintenance of the road. Uh, one of our major problems is the growth that's occurred in Boise, and in spite of the recession, is still going on, and in trying to meet the various metropolitan plans for the county and the city of Boise. It takes road improvements to get people to the priority growth areas and, and all those things. Uh, those are our big problems as we look into the future. Uh, as far as maintaining the roads, we can always stop, you know, major improvements and, and various construction projects and put it all into maintenance if that's where it has to go. Uh, we don't want to do that. I don't think the public wants to do that. Uh, I think the answer from Ada County standpoint is probably the Special Improvement District, uh, which was basically an enlargement of the local improvement district and allowed us to uh, establish a highway uh, improvement district. Maybe it may be countywide or it may be just the northwest part of Ada County or the part of the city of Boise or whatever, but it would, once established, it would require a two-thirds vote of the electorate to 
put the bonded indebtedness against it. And in difference to uh, Representative Gilbert's comment that it was getting around the 1%, uh, the intent is, is that it stays exactly within the intent and it does require a two-thirds vote just like the 1% does. Okay. Do you have, uh, at least in terms of your problem in Ada County, do you have hope that uh, there is that there is a future for this idea? Uh, despite its treatment by the legislature? Well, in, in fact, I felt very good about the way the legislature treated it from the standpoint of the receptiveness to the idea. They did put it out on the floor uh, and it did, was then sent back to committee. I think a lot of that was due to the timing of it. It took us quite a while to, we tried to introduce it on the Senate side and then we ended up having to put it over on the House side. And that fouled us up time-wise, got us into the latter part of the session and I think we probably wouldn't have gotten it through the other side of the house anyway. So I think timing wise, uh, it gave us a chance to tell people what it is. It's different than has been proposed in the past. Uh, it is only for Ada County Highway District. Uh, before it was a special improvement district legislation that would have allowed for cities and counties to pretty well do anything they wanted to within their governing limits uh, as long as the people voted for it. Uh, this, we got rid of a lot of those problems that had been there before. Mr. Moss in uh, Pocatello, your, uh, your solution, or at least part of the solution, is to consider the streets uh, like a utility in the same way I take it as uh, garbage and uh, sewer service would be uh, considered a, a utility type service. Uh, what's the status of that, such, of that proposal right now? Well, the status is that there's an ordinance being drafted that would put that in place and we will take it through the budget process in anticipation of the adoption of the budget by the 1st of October. Public reception has been pretty good. We did a telephone sampling poll to determine whether or not we had support for a two-thirds vote for a bond issue. The bond issue would have only been $3 million. And that poll indicated that there would be a two-thirds vote possible. Uh, the council took that information, though, and said that bond issue of $3 million would probably end up costing $6 million because the way we were going to pay it back was out of the existing gas tax money rather than from property tax directly. And the, the public seems to feel that if we can come up with a, a fair fee on the utility bill, that would allow us to put all of that money into street improvements rather than any interest costs. And we will have a public hearing as we will with the rest of the budget and that fee will be included in that public hearing. That's the present strategy that the council has adopted. Uh, can you give me a ballpark figure on what that fee might be? I'd rather not on a home because we really don't know yet. And once that figure gets out, that gets in everybody's mind. But I would guess, Mark, that it would not exceed $3 a month for single-family residents would probably put us into a fairly good position to have an ongoing street maintenance program, providing we can keep the same level from property taxes and the same level from gasoline taxes in place. Mr. Williams in uh, Moscow, uh, could, could such a plan work for your city? Mark, it's, uh, it's a brand new idea up here. Uh, I heard about it just when KUID called Lewiston regarding the possibility. I think that if we uh, considered it, we would do the same thing that Pocatello is doing. Uh, put it to a vote of the people with a lot of telephone polls and so on. And I would say that a maximum of $5 a month would be the most we could levy, but it certainly would eliminate the high interest rates that you would pay out if you try to float a big bond issue. What, uh, what do both of you gentlemen think of uh, Mr. Winder's proposal here in terms of, of uh, some sort of special improvement district? Uh, is that a good idea? Is that possible? Mr. Williams? Well, in Lewiston a year ago, we tried to float a bond issue for street improvements and, and construction, and it was shot down about two to one. I think Pocatello had the same uh, experience as did Boise kind of feel that uh, we have local improvement districts already and it, it's uh, plus business improvement districts. Uh, if we could get the people to go for them on a two-thirds vote, it would be fine, but it's a very difficult thing to do right now. They're sort of ducking taxes all the way. Well, Mr. Moss, what does that tell you about, uh, about the public's willingness to pay for these services that they complain about? Well, first I'd support the idea that local improvement district as Ada County proposed would be another method available to the citizens for an option 
that, that might fit a particular locality or particular neighborhood in the community just fine and people would be willing to do that. So I, I think we need that mechanism to do that. I think the problem, of course, is, as it always is, um, people want the services but they're not really sure how much they really want to pay for it and why. And we're faced with a very difficult marketing project to, do, to make sure that what we're charging people for what services and indeed do they want those services and are they willing to pay for it and use some of that kind of information in, in good decision making and determine whether or not maybe an unpaved street is a tolerable sort of thing to have happen in Idaho cities. Uh, the streets that we've had to tear up and put back to gravel, we frankly had less complaints about those than the ones that we've got holes in them yet. Really? Uh, Mr. Winder, how about, uh, the di what does it say, I guess, that uh, so many cities have gone to the voters and said, here, we're going to do this, we're going to make the streets better, and folks won't, uh, won't vote for it. Or well, they won't vote for it in enough numbers to have it happen. We did try an override here about two years ago. It was a general operating override and not a specific project or projects type of override. Uh, we have done some investigating on the idea of turning the streets back to gravel and it appears that the maintenance of a gravel road, even though for the first year or so may be uh, the most expedient way to handle it, uh, it becomes much more expensive to maintain a gravel road than a paved road and that's one of the reasons we see paved roads out there. Right. Well, let me just ask you, what, what do you think of uh, what the city of Pocatello is, uh, is thinking about in terms of uh, designating the streets as utilities? Well, I, th I think the utility idea obviously needs some study and it, and it probably has some merit in itself. Uh, one of the things we looked at is if we, for instance, had a $50 million uh, bond issue here in Ada County and we looked at a 30-year financing of that, uh, a $75,000 home, uh, would probably require an annual uh, payment against that of about $26. Now what happens is, is you run into basically paying interest for so long that instead of paying for the improvement, you're paying for interest right. for maybe the first 15 or 20 years of the repayment, but the total cost is reduced uh, to that property owner in the initial years from the standpoint of, of getting the job done and, and having the improvement completed. Overall, it's going to cost them a lot more money. Uh, the public just needs to make up their mind whether they want to do the uh, streets and, and uh, keep them well maintained or whether they want to continue to pay for the broken uh, front ends and uh, tires and rails. Right. Well, I've just got to go back to Mr. Williams finally in Moscow and ask you about uh, Commissioner White's comment about a countywide district in, in Nez Perce County. Would that save money and would it, uh, and if so, why not do it? I don't know. We have not discussed this in the least, and it was kind of uh, kind of news to me when uh, Commissioner White uh, brought it up. I do know that the county is having problems up here as badly as the city is in that they're having to convert or are talking of converting back right. to some gravel roads out in the uh, rural areas. Right. Well, I'm sorry I've got to interrupt mm -hmm. it there, Mr. Williams. We right. thank you for mm -hmm. being with us tonight in Moscow, sir. You betcha. Uh, Chuck Moss in Pocatello, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mark. And uh, Mr. Winder, thank you for joining us in Boise. We thank you, it. Mark. That's our time for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow. I'm Mark Johnson. Good night. The funding for this program is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the Friends of 4, 10, and 12.